Thank you, Dr. Nagabe. Can you all hear me? Nice to be here with a lot of friends. I would ordinarily say old friends, and it'd be true. But uh, just conclude that we're friends. And I'm going to be brief too. I'll take five minutes probably. But just to remind you of some numbers, we concentrate on Americans, but it really is Europe get in shape too, and even unfortunately parts of the Pacific Rim. But in the United States, there, it's estimated there are 13,200,000 Americans who have coronary heart disease. This comes from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey 3, shown at the bottom of the slide. There's 7,800,000 myocardial infarctions and 6,800,000 patients with angina and 4,800,000 with strokes. One in five males and females has some sort of coronary vascular disease. And since 1900, cardiovascular disease has been the number one killer in the United States every year but 1918. All of you know why 1918 was different? It was the influenza epidemic, pandemic. And there are nearly 2,600 Americans die of cardiovascular disease every day, an average of one death every 34 seconds. And CVD accounted for 38.5% of all deaths or one of every 2.6 deaths in the United States in 2001. And myocardial infarctions occur in patients with plaques with mild to moderate obstruction, more often than not. And you see the study from Ambrose here. I see Val Fuster at the back of the room. Played a role in that. Dr. Little, Dr. Nobuyashi, Dr. Gerard, and then all patients. And plaques that change suddenly, leading to myocardial infarction, fissured or ulcerated in the far right-hand bar. Less than 50% stenosis. Most of that's red. And it emphasizes the problem. This is familiar to all of us, an artery on the bottom right with a fairly open lumen that all of a sudden has fissured or ulcerated a plaque and developed a thrombus. This is well known to everybody in this room, the characteristics of vulnerable plaques. I'm sure we can agree on some of them, if not all of them, but there's a large lipid pool, there's a thin fibrous cap, there's decreased collagen content in that cap, there's macrophage and activated T cell infiltration, there's some mast cells as well, there's a depletion of cap smooth muscle cells and an outward remodeling, necrotic core and increased neoangiogenesis, sometimes calcium nodules, and some of these at least have temperature and pH heterogeneity. And this just summarizes this in pictorial form, and you've seen it many times, and most of you have drawn it. This looks at the costs in the United States. This comes from the NHLBI by Dr. Tom. Billions of dollars in uh, the United States in 2004 in cardiovascular disease and stroke. Heart disease, $238.6 billion of dollars. Coronary heart disease, $133 billion. Stroke, $54 billion. Hypertensive disease, $56 billion. Congestive heart failure, $29 billion. That number is going up. It will keep going up for quite a while. And then $368 billion for total cardiovascular disease costs. And coronary atherosclerosis is ranked number one, 2001 data from the Healthcare Cost and Utilization Project in costs, 35.1 billion. QDMI, if you see, heart failure and cerebral vascular disease and dysrhythmias. So vulnerable plaque's important and vulnerable patient is important. And I just want to add my encouragement to Dr. Nagabe's. We really do need to come together and work together and try to make more rapid progress across the spectrum of this kind of effort from the discovery of the genes and proteins that confer these risks to exact mechanisms to being able to detect vulnerable plaques wherever they exist invasively and more importantly non-invasively in time and then finding therapies that go beyond weight loss and blood pressure control and cessation of smoking but actually are preventive. Great pleasure to be with you. I'm going to run right out the door because I've got to give another talk about uh, 30 minutes away and 20 minutes. But it's great to be with you. Thank you.